I must explain that you have to have the war, first of all, the disaster of World War II, because out of that came the Edinburgh Festival. The Edinburgh Festival was born out of the war, uh, out of the need to use the, the language of art to heal the wounds of war. And out of the Edinburgh Festival came the Traverse. And the Traverse was an attempt to Europeanize, to help the spirit of the festival to be felt in Edinburgh, not just for three weeks of the year, but for 49 other weeks of the year. And um, this was how we presented visual art artists like William Featherstone from Canada, Douglas Croix from the USA, Martin Bradley from France, um, Patrick Heron from England, in what was a wonderful gallery. The first ever gallery, I guess, to be wholly committed to international artists, uh, linked to Scottish artists. And um, it was founded uh, on the basis that it would be a, a, um, a theatre programme and a visual art programme at one and the same time. Okay? It wasn't an art centre, it was a club. And I must ask you to consider these two images. After the festival in August, to Dundee Repertory Theatre. And it made the career of somebody called um, John Kearney. But you can see that we we're concentrating not just on the idea of the plays we were presenting, but also the, um, the theatre productions and the original reality of the building, how it was influenced and inspired by something called the paperback bookshop. Um, someone else was involved in the Traverse, very much so, a chap called Jim Haynes, who was an American. So this whole room is celebrating the fact that it was the 50th anniversary last year of the founding of the Travers. But John and I were involved in the, how can I say, the birth of the Travers. And now it's become something else, I'm not quite sure what it is. Mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, it, when, when it found, was founded, it was a club, it's no longer a club. Some of the images that created by the artists are very beautiful. And um, it was about, bringing the world's writers to Edinburgh, and this is Norman Mailer with a young John Calder, one of the many artists. Uh, well, writers, but mainly I thought of them as artists. This is um, myself with a very important painter called Brian Winter. So it's not just, it's not just writers, it's painters, thinkers, students, and um, the whole thing was um, about taking into consideration that many pieces of literature and, th and, and uh, if you know, art weren't about the English language. And so that image of the Tower of Babel <laughs> is really what you're trying to deal with, the fact that once you move out of your comfort zone of the country in which you live and the language which you're using, you're dealing with the problem of the Tower of Babel. It's about um, a historic moment. This is a period of about four or five years, from 1963, more or less 1967, 68, when we were joined up with the world of this man here, who is John Calder. He created uh, another form of the Traverse, as it were, in an opera festival. Um, he called it Led Lanet Nights because he had a country house called Led Lanet. So he had to go a long way there was no fourth bridge in these days. 
You have to travel for hours to get to a remote part of Fife, and there you could enjoy top-class opera uh, in a house. So here are some of the protagonists, Jim Haynes, Tom Mitchell, Tamara Afroff, and these are part of the drawings I made of the people who were part of it at the time. I think we could end up, more or less, um, here. Uh, the Travis was responsible uh, through the Writers' Conference of creating a stir at the Ebner Festival. This is a performance piece. We introduced what is called performance art uh, or a happening in the festival. People are trying to enter the, 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 the uh, Ebner University's famous McEwen Hall, trying to walk over tires. Things are impossible. When they get inside, there's a huge argument about what is the future of literature and the, <clears throat> the world of culture. Um, and so I am thinking that I remain all the time somewhat concerned with the education of children because they represent the future. Not our generation, but their generation. All these young children now are at age 70. <laughs> they were my school children. And um, I have to think uh, out of the box, as it were, and see how all of this is about an attempt to get to grips with the truth of the story of the last 60 years that has produced the Edinburgh Festival, the Travis Theatre, I suppose the DeMarco Gallery, the DeMarco Foundation, and whatever you would think of when you think of the name Summer Hall. And thank heavens we've got this space. Uh, but we need a much bigger space. Because <laughs> what you've seen is a tiny, tiny fraction of um, what is basically I think I have to use the word, a Gesamtkunstwerk. That's a German word meaning a total art work. But really its function is as a, um, a piece of academic research. We need thousands of students from all over the world to study it. Okay, and so with that thought that this is really an artwork. <laughs> A collaborative work involving thousands of artists. Um, and I've had to do the job of inviting them here over the last, I don't know, ever since, the, well, ever since I can remember, certainly since the 60s. And that's a great story that is not just mine, it's the story of all these people. And I am grateful to Robert McDowell who is an artist, uh, for making this space available. And I hope that everyone will come to use it, to regard it, what we have here, as not just an exhibition, but a place where you can find out something about yourself. And as Joseph Boyce said, is it not the case that everyone is an artist, given a chance? So it's an invitation, this whole thing. It, it, it's asking a question. Is everyone not an artist, including the children of Room 13, including all the visitors to this Kazam Kunstwerk? <laughs>